From being sacked off at Chelsea at 14 years old, to being one of the Bundesliga's biggest stars 8 years later, the career of Michael Elise has not been easy. And this video, I will cover it all. The story begins on December 12th, 2001. Elise was born in White City, London, England. White City was one of the safer parts of England respectively and it had a strong football culture. It was then that Olise would do what every kid does and join the local football club. As a boy his idols were Messi, Zidane, and Neymar which is probably one of the reasons why football must have clicked with him so easily. Because he was much better than his peers and excelled to the level of playing for Chelsea's academy at a young age. He quickly rose through the ranks proving to be one of the most technically gifted in his class. In spite of that however it was around age 14 that Olise decided he wasn't fit for the London Academy. So he would move and spend a brief amount of time at Manchester City before he decided he was better off taking his skills to the Academy of Championship Club Reading. At this point he was around 16, 17 years old and opting for a lesser known club like Olise was a risky move for someone in his position. In 2017 he became part of the scholarship program and was offered a clear path to playing first team football, something that wasn't so simple at Chelsea or Man City. Reading also offered an environment that would foster more personal growth and playing time which were important factors for a footballer. And looking back at this, it would pay off. It would only take less than 24 months for Olise to shine through the academy levels. He impressed all his coaches and was one of the pivotal players in the under 21 and under 23 sides. And in March of 2019, Olise finally broke through. Making his first team debut, albeit in a 3-0 loss against Leeds, his performance showed promise and it wasn't long before he signed a 3-year professional contract. At this point he was only about 19 years old and his performances in the 2019-20 season looked like he was already pretty used to playing first team football, but he wasn't really given much of an opportunity. Throughout the majority of the season he wasn't even included on the bench, but for the last 13 or so games of the season he was able to find some game time if any at all. He wasn't able to score any goals for the first time, but he did record two assists, and his performances were improving with every match. He has the passing of Urzil, dribbling of Ben Arfa and crossing of Beckham. He has a bright future ahead considering he is dedicated to achieve his dreams. And this was absolutely true. Ulisse would end up earning himself a role in the starting 11 for the 2020-21 season, which would prove to be very important for the trajectory of his career. And before I continue, if you could please do me a favor and hit the subscribe button, it would really help me out. Thank you. Now that we have made it to the 2020-21 season, Michael Ulisse would have to prove himself in the first team. The season began with him in the limelight. From the start, the league had taken notice of him and recognized him as a threat. He scored his first club goal against Barnsley, and from there it was only up. There wasn't another player his age with the same level of technical ability and confidence in the league, which were factors in driving him to the top. Coupled with his unlimited creativity, he started to score or assist in almost every match and became a big piece of the Reading attack. His numbers at the end of the season counted up to 7 goals and 12 assists in all competitions, his best so far in his career. He was in such good form this season that he ended up being nominated for the EFL Player of the Season award before winning it in April of 2022, which put his name on the map and was really a statement to the biggest clubs in England. This is also around the same time that he was popping on the radar of those big clubs. But none of them really decided to pull the trigger on him, except for one. Welcome to Crystal Palace, welcome to South London. How big a moment is this for you in your life? Yes, it's a big moment. Crystal Palace would sign a 20-year-old Michael Elise for around 8 million euros. With him joining under Patrick Vieira as the manager, he did not take long before he had his first full appearance for the club in a 1-1 home draw against Newcastle United, and in his next match in the Prem, he scored his first goal for the club against Leicester City, becoming the youngest goal scorer ever at the club. From that moment on, Michael Elise started to ball out and show his talent in the world's best leagues. He would assist against Arsenal, score against West Ham, and was having incredible performances, but something that was lacking was his consistency. Some days he'd be on the ball, but others he'd be missing the mark. This was one of the things that held him back in terms of playing consistent international football, but in the next campaign, he would lock in. The 2022-23 year. His performances were getting better, and that little bit more consistent, but his output as a winger was a little bit low. His role in the team was more supportive than it was for him to be a goal scorer, with him recording 11 assists and 2 goals that season, and those numbers made it way easier for him to find consistent game time throughout the season, but still, some things were just not really clicking for him. For example, he was starting to feel the pressure from the club and the fans to perform. He was one of the youngest players in the squad and one of their most exciting, yet he struggled to tie in that much into consistency on the pitch. By the end of the season, his title as one of the Premier League's brightest talents have sort of simmered down. I think he's mediocre slash overrated, not city caliber for sure. But Elise still won the Palace Player of the Season and Palace's Goal of the Season award. 
so there are very mixed feelings on his potential. On the contrary though, he did start to become a starter in the French under-21s. Playing for them in the under-21 Euros, he scored a goal against Norway when having a decent campaign, until he suffered a hamstring injury in that same match. From June of 2024 to November, it took around 5 months for him to heal with the recovery process being pretty brutal, but he finally made his return in the 2023-24 season against Everton. It's hard for any player to sit out injured, but it seemed that Michael Lucy had come back much stronger than he was before, and much more determined to make a difference in the Palace team. Lucy would score goals against high profile clubs like Man City, Chelsea, a brace against Man United and West Ham, he really started to shine in the Premier League. At the same time, Eber Ritchie, as another Palace player, was also starting to catch on to some form, and together they were unstoppable. By the end of the year, Olusi had recorded 10 goals and 6 assists in 19 games that season. Imagine what he could have done if he had played the entire season. Anyhow, this was convincing enough for him to be called up to France's Olympic Games squad in the summer of 2024. The tournament began with France playing against the United States of America, and Olusi, he balled out one goal and an assist. In the next match against Guinea, Olusi would assist the winning goal for France to be 2-0 in the group stage. Fast forward to the match against Argentina in the quarterfinals, where he would of course have to bag another assist. At this point, he had one goal and three assists in four games in the Olympics, and that would only get better when you would have to score an assist again against Egypt, getting France into the final against Spain. France wouldn't win the Olympics, but Elise would assist another goal in the final, and overall just had an incredible Olympic campaign, which was a big help for him to pop up on the radar of many big clubs. But specifically, Bayern Munich approached Crystal Palace and made the move to sign him for around 60 million euros, including a bunch of add-ons. From the small part of London to make it to the biggest club in Germany, Olise was living out his dreams, but he was far from being finished. Olise made his debut as a substitute in a 4-0 win against SSV Ulm in the DFB Pokal, registering an assist for Kingsley Coleman's goal within two minutes of entering the pitch. He'd already made an impact, but on the 14th of September, he would end up banging in his first Bundesliga goals against Holstal Kiel, and three days later, he scored a brace, his first goals at the Allianz Arena on his Champions League debut. Michael Olise had a lot going on in the beginning of his Bayern Munich career. So far this season, he has also scored a brace of goals and assists against Werder Bremen and scored another goal against Frankfurt. Besides Harry Kane, he is the second in the team for goals and assists, helping Bayern Munich sit at the top of the table early into the Bundesliga season. Olise, under Vincent Kompany as a manager, looks to be an exciting chapter in the young winger's career. But bigger things are on the horizon for him. In this most recent international break, Olise found himself making his first senior team appearances in the French national team, and as an initiation ritual, if you want to call it that, he did this. On the pitch, however, he started in the game against Italy and Israel, and subbed in against Belgium in the National League. But this was one of the few times where he didn't really play that well. His performances were deemed a bit lackluster, but Club Vobo will be back by the time this is uploaded. So let me know in the comments if you see Olise becoming one of the best wingers in the next few years. Anyways, that's all I got today and I'll see you in the next video.